In our reading from Luke today, we find Jesus talking to uh, about 70 uh, people who, who, who he will send out to do uh, works of ministry in areas far and uh, some here to uh, proclaim the gospel, to say abroad what they have heard uh, from Christ himself, and ultimately to grow the church. He tells them things, uh, as we've heard, and as are continued from last week's gospel, like uh, don't bring, uh, don't wear two tunics, don't wear extra, don't bring extra sandals. Uh, he tells them what to do if people reject their message, which uh, was <coughs> to be expected in a lot of places. And the most important part of what he tells them is this, that you have to go out and spread the word. That evangelism, which is what this is really about, doesn't happen if you stay where you are. Evangelism doesn't happen if you just talk to the people you've been talking to. It only happens if we, and if we as the church, and if uh, those to whom Jesus was directly speaking, actually go from where we, where we are. This is what it says, and it says something fundamentally important about uh, not just the church, the early church uh, of that era, but of the, uh, about the modern church. That, uh, and, and in this case I'm talking about uh, the church with a big C, God's uh, one holy and universal church, as we like to say about it in the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed and so on, that the church is more than just a building or a series of buildings. Uh, it's, it's not about, it's not about you know, location. Uh, in, it's not about a single location in that sense. What the church really is, is a place uh, from which individuals uh, and, and communities from which groups of people, uh, as the payers in, in uh, the gospel of today, will do ministry in the community. It's something like a, it's something like a home base. Uh, I, uh, I had a friend uh, give me a little bit of a modern parable about it. The church is like a battery charger. <laughs> I kind of like that. But it, it's, a, it's a good point. The church is, a, and I mean the church in the building sense, this, this physical spot and uh, buildings like it function so that <clears throat> members of the community tools of Christ's work can come and be rested and rejuvenated and prepared for the ministry that they will do elsewhere. Mm, that's right. The center of ministry isn't this building, and it's not the focus of ministry. It's just a place where we are rested. The, the reason I bring that up is because the concept of evangelism can be a difficult one I've found uh, for Episcopalians like myself and uh, for a lot of other folks. It's, uh, it's kind of a difficult area. But that idea, that idea of uh, the church as a battery charger, says a lot about what our mission is, what our mission is to be if we are to be uh, a Christian community in the modern era. I, I want to thank Alex for the phone somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>
place of gathering for bishops and for clergy and for priests and for deacons. We want to uh, be a place where people read and pray and serve, and all those things are great. But after a while, it just got so unwieldy that you couldn't really see what their ministry was centering on being about. And then in a stroke of absolute genius, this is what they did. They got rid of the whole thing and wrote the following in their mission statement. The mission of Canterbury Cathedral is to show people Jesus. Period. <laughs> that was it. The mission of Canterbury Cathedral is to show people Jesus. That's all right. I, I said it because I, I think that should be the mission of not just one cathedral, not just one parish, but the mission of the whole holy universal church. Our mission is to show people Jesus, and that is evangelism. That is the center of evangelism. So what does it mean when I say to show people Jesus? I mean that when, when we do the uh, works that we often consider ministry, uh, things that you know, Jesus talks about in kind of the famous and often uh, quoted Matthew 25, you know, we uh, give food to the hungry, give drink to those who are thirsty, give clothes uh, to those who need clothes, visit the, uh, uh, visit the imprisoned, uh, care for the sick, and so on, in a, and care for the least of these. In each of those things, we show people Jesus, not just the Jesus that is in us as servants serving one another, but also the Jesus that is in them as someone who is worthy and deserving of being served and being a child of God uh, themselves. And it's not just in those little works that we show people Jesus, but uh, it is whenever someone sees or hears about uh, us doing those works, those good works, they see the Jesus that is in us, in the person, uh, in us as servant, in those being served, who sometimes is also uh, ourselves, and uh, in themselves as the hearer uh, who, who uh, is coming into that knowledge. And it's not just when we you know, care for the sick or the hungry or the thirsty or uh, whatever the case may be. Whenever we talk a little bit about uh, our faith and whenever we talk about uh, our love of Christ and our love of the Lord, we are showing people Jesus in perhaps uh, a little bit of a more direct sense that we are more likely to notice. And it's not just you know, going out on the street corners and, you know, bullhorns and talking about your faith or whatever. Uh, it's things like saying to uh, friends and colleagues and you know, neighbors and people we know, hey, you know, I, uh, I go to this church, St. James, on, if, I, I know you and your son and daughter are looking for a service project to do. Uh, you know, we do this dinner on Wednesday nights and it'd be great if you'd come along. I think you'd really enjoy it. Or it can even be in saying things like, Hey, my, my family and I, we're going through a little bit of a tough time. Would you pray with me? Would you pray for me? Uh, we could really use your help. In each of those things, we show one another Jesus. And we don't always recognize it. Now, that can be a little tough, and I understand that. Because, uh, you know, modern culture kind of uh, influences us and convinces us that in talking about our faith, talking about our religion, is isn't to be done in polite company, is uh, you know, it's kind of taboo and, you know, so on. And it's, it can be really difficult to get over that. Uh, even for somebody like me in some areas, it's really tough to get over that sometimes. But it's fundamentally important. But, but it's even more than that. You see, showing people Jesus isn't just about uh, talking to people who we know and who we like and who we're in community with and, you know, people who we really want to be around all the time. I mean, those things are great, and, uh, and I think we're all happy to have those people in our lives. But the people to whom Jesus was speaking, they're not going to talk to their friends and neighbors. They're going out into far-reaching parts of, uh, of the area where they would probably never been, they didn't know anybody, they had no connection to the community, they were you know, trying to be welcomed and even staying in the homes of people that they probably just met that A. Uh, it was a tough proposition. And similarly, that's, uh, that's an idea that we need to understand if we are going to be uh, evangelists to one another. A couple of, uh, I think it must have about a year ago, uh, I was uh, working on a political campaign uh, and uh, it, was, it was about uh, protecting clean air and 
reducing air pollution. And over the course of uh, three months on that campaign, I knocked on 3,000 doors all across Hamilton County, north, south, east, west, uh, all parts of the city, neighborhoods that, and I'm not a native of Cincinnati, neighborhoods that I'd never seen or been to, wouldn't really have a whole lot of reason to go to you know, far off parts of the area and so on, places where I didn't know anybody. Um, and just going up, knocking on doors, talking to folks about the environment. And it got to be, at least when I started out, it was really tough. The idea of going up to somebody's house who I don't know and you know, saying, hi, I'm Carl, I want to talk to you about the environment. But, yeah, yeah it's just weird. <laughs> it's a really weird idea. <laughs> and, but eventually I, I managed to get adjusted to it. And, when, and in doing that, a, a really surprising thing happened. Of the folks that were home that I got to speak to for even about 30 seconds, 70% of the people that I spoke with immediately signed up and were happy to uh, support clean air with us. And of those, uh, we got back in contact with those people, and uh, many of those wanted to come out and write a letter to their congressman or uh, write a letter to the editor of the Inquirer and uh, come out to events with us, to in public hearings and things like that. You know, they waved signs with us at events and all sorts of things. And by the end of that summer, I had gotten 100 people to volunteer in some way or another to protect the environment. That's the kind of evangelism, although in a non-religious area, that we need to get into the idea of doing. And it's not just knocking on random doors. It's the idea that we can speak to people who we know in not necessarily immediately religious contexts and share our, our faith and things that Jesus has done for us and the Lord has done for us and through us and in us in our lives. It's the idea that uh, we can talk to people who we don't necessarily know all that well, who, you know, we kind of be in passing and, uh, and, and not be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. it's so important. You grow up being so afraid of talking, not just talking to people we don't know that well, but talking about religion, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to close in saying this. When we evangelize, when we show people Jesus, we often reap, or we often plant the seeds of a tree that we won't be there to reap. In fact, we won't even see it when the harvest is finished. I have grown a lot of fondness for teachers, mostly because my mom's a teacher and my grandma is a teacher, and so on. And so I admire the work that they do in the, the knowledge that they give to their students, they often will never see the good works that come of it down the road. That's the work that we do when we evangelize, when we uh, share our faith, when we uh, minister and care for others. Often we have no idea what happens later when somebody sees us doing that or when uh, the good deed that we've done to somebody else, that person pays it forward uh, and does something good for somebody else. But it's a humongous effect. It's absolutely incredible to see uh, how, how impressive that work of ministry can be in growing and growing and growing. The disciples uh, of, of Jesus, the 70 in this case, that we've heard of today, they didn't know that 2,000 years later that Christianity would be one of the world's leading religions. That we would have people in every corner of the globe praising the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that would have been absolutely incredible for them to hear. They probably would have never believed it if you told it to them. But here we are. And it's an amazing thing because that's the work that evangelizing does. And it grows the church. It grows the small church and it grows the big church. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an amazing work. The mission of Canterbury Cathedral, as I said, is to show people Jesus. And that's why I think it should be our mission as a small church and as a big church. And it should be the mission of each one of us uh, in our evangelization.